Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to all of you. Namaste, salam, and Merry Christmas. Our chairperson uh, for tonight is again Devika Bipat, who has joined us uh, just a, a minute ago. She's from Suriname. She's a business executive assistant of DB Virtual Assistants. And she has also her own company, DB Linkage Events. Devika is a trainer and events organizer. She trains people in customer service, public speaking, and basic etiquette. Devika and others would volunteer with us, as all of us are doing, when they are free as a form of a public service. I and other members of a planning team would continue to stay in the background as directors of this program. So Devika, take it from here and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mahabir. Uh, can you hear me? Can yes, all of you hear yes. me? Um, yes, we're hearing it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mahabir. Now, good night, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in which time zone, because we have people from all over the world joining our meetings. But what I can say is namaste. Namaste, I can say at any time, at any, in any time zone, it's just uh, amazing how universal namaste is. Um, well, as we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic is still rampant, so the safest place to be right now is at home with your family and friends. Make sure to wash your hands regularly, sanitize your environment, and in public places, please keep your social distance and um, face uh, your and use a face mask and uh, make sure to yes keep a social distance. Now. Um, we know that the PNM government in Trinidad and Tobago plans to temper with the SC, with the C secondary school entrance exam, as well as the concordat agreement between the state and the religious or dominational schools. And um, these, these plans are designed to prevent Indian children from excelling in national exams at all levels in the country. Now, we are pleased to note that the International Court of Justice has ruled that it has a jury, uh, jurisdiction to hear that the compliant filed by Guyana in its border dispute with Venezuela. Now, in Suriname, ladies and gentlemen, we know that the government has threatened to evict hundreds of illegal Cubans uh, who have been squatting in Nigeria. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, this is a weekly forum being hosted by the Indo-Caribbean Culture Center, a legally registered research and publishing company operating since 2010. We are dedicated to critically exploring and discussing the most pressing issues and events that impact mainly Indo-Caribbean people in the region. We believe that they and their views are often marginal or marginalized in the mainstream media and informal discourses, and also in public groups, organizations, and institutions. But this forum uh, seeks to provide voice and visibility to a group that is an ethnic minority in the Caribbean, but nevertheless still the largest ethnic minority in the English-speaking Caribbean. This meeting would end at 9 p.m. and 10 uh, Trinidad time and 10 p.m. Suriname time, or soon after, meaning it would be about one and a half hour long. Now, our moderator tonight, she is um, Priya Gopal Rai, and uh, she is again our moderator for tonight. She is a consultant and part-time educator, just like me also from Suriname. And her academic background is in medical and paramedical research. Uh, Priya is doing her PhD at the Amsterdam Medical Center in the Netherlands on the topic of kidney transplantation, which is, an, which is amazing. So I am happy to welcome Priya. Um, Priya, welcome and take it over from here. Thank you, Derika. Thank you for the introduction also. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Um, this uh, a public meeting in the form of a panel discussion will also include playing Chutney Parang songs to that tonight. 
and um, please mute your microphone unless you have to speak and um, uh, prevent the background noise and um, distracting noise in, um, that can uh, distract everyone here. Um, the last week's topic was uh, the impact of Chinese, Hispanic and Haitian migrants on Trinidad, Guyana and Suriname. And this topic was partly chosen in a commemoration of International Migrants Day, which was observed on Friday. Our topic for tonight is the invention of Christmas chutney parang music in Trinidad. Among all the countries in the world, Trinidad and Tobago is a, wonderful of, is, is a wonderland of inventions. It is a country that has created the steel pen, the calypso, the chutney, the tasa, the pichicari, the double delicacy, the Diwali Nagar, uh, the Mastana Bahar, and possibly the Dental also. Trinidad and Tobago has also given the world Parang and its offspring, Soka Parang and Chetni Parang. Uh, last week, our topic in this forum included migrants from Venezuela. Well, Parang was created in Trinidad with, Trinidad with uh, the arrival of Venezuelan uh, migrants in the 1900s uh, who came to work in the cocoa plantations. Tonight, we feature Chitney Parang, a style of music that is a crossover between Venezuela, India, and Trinidad that is sung in Spanish, Hindi, and English. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us welcome our first speaker, and that is Dr. Francisca Eller, a lead singer and a composer for Los Dinamicos uh, Parang Group. She sings traditional Parang as well as Soka and Chitney Parang. And Dr. Alert um, lectures in ethnomusicology uh, and uh, it, at the uh, Catholic Institute in Trinidad. She has presented an, and published many research papers, one of which is entitled Parang, a meeting ground for Afro and India, Indo uh, Trinidadians. So uh, let us welcome Dr. Francesca. Please um, speak for um, 20 minutes and maybe some more because one of the speakers is uh, not going to have his presentation today. So the floor is yours. Thank you all very much. It is wonderful to be on a panel like this. I have always been enthused by you know, music crossover and the coming together of cultures. So I'll just begin. So I'll begin by talking about the confluence of Chutney and the Parang. This is a quotation from Satnarain Balkaran Singh when he had one of his seminars. The art form which emanates from one cultural stream, even though it exists side by side with another, cannot and does not exhibit monopolistic exclusivity. This is most obvious in the present cultural landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. The above quotation can be readily applied to the hybrid Chutney Parang musical genre. The Indo-cultural stream of Chutney has met the Afro-dominated cultural stream of Parang, and this confluence has led to the invention of the infectious and rhythmic Chutney Parang. And my next slide, I just summarize what is Chutney. Most of us will know all of this. A quick paced infectious East Indian folk song brought to Trinidad by the East Indian indentured immigrants from 1845. And according to the source, it belongs to that genre of folk music that originated in the province of Bihar in India about two centuries ago. There's a general consensus by researchers that Trinidad's chutney music emerged from those hot spicy songs sung by the East Indian women behind closed doors before a segregated female audience on magical nights. That is the Friday nights when the initiation ceremony for Hindu weddings takes place. It is usually accompanied by folk acoustic instruments such as the harmonium, dolak and the dantel. It is believed that the lapsed instrument was invented in Trinidad by the said immigrants. It may be sung entirely in Hindi and Bajpuri, 
or it may employ a combination of English lyrics and a mixture of Hindi and Bajpuri. And according to Valkaran Singh, the current presentation is a mishmash of Trinidad English dialect, some Indian Bajpuri dialect, and some Hindi words. And what we have noted is that Shatni singing has moved from folk to the public stage, because we have our, our chutney competitions and soca chutney competitions, where songs of varying themes are delivered generally by men who are accompanied by male musicians and female dancers. So we can note that chutney nowadays has been mostly been appropriated by the male. And I just had to mention two important founders or two important contributors to chutney, Sundar Popu, combining musical elements from both local chutney and Indian film music, he composed the comical song, Nana and Nani, which was released on disc. His melody was simple, catchy, and his lyrics in a blend of English and Hindi were in the most part comprehensible to everyone, though sung in an Indian style. And I remember growing up and knowing this song and singing along with it. And another notable contributor is Harry Mahabia, leader of the Bijavyari National Indian Orchestra. Mahabir, though trained in India, he used Western instruments, which therefore played on a Western scale. He simplified the Indian rhythms from their irregular shifting patterns into a consistent Afro-Creole beat. As evidenced in the Mastana Bahal show, he adapted Indian linear melodies to Western techniques of harmony. I'll now go into a little thing about the parang. Parang comes from the Spanish word paranda, which is literally translated as the act of merrymaking. This act of merrymaking characterized by the singing of songs in Spanish, accompanied by musical instruments, was brought to Trinidad and Tobago by peons. And as already explained by our presenter, they were really cocoa piles. They became known as cocoa piles because they were recruited to work on the cocoa plantations in Trinidad and Tobago. And they mainly came from Oriente Venezuela, which is the east part inclusive of Margarita. And they came throughout the 19th and the early 20th centuries. The vibrant music that they brought was the Christmas parang, known as aguinaldos. And these aguinaldos were really, as you said before, gifts of song. And they brought other secular folk songs of diverse themes, such as the manzanare, which is a, a song about a river, an important river, and the guarapo, which tells the tale of the fermented cane juice, which kept the paranderos warm, might be akin to bush rum or something like that. In Trinidad and Tobago, this activity appropriated primarily by Afro-Trinidadians gradually became a musical genre that is called parang. This is what they did during the Christmas season. They went from house to house, taking Christmas chair to friends and neighbors. They sang aguinaldos, explained again, based on the Christmas story, with the aid of a quattro and a pair of maracas. So at the beginning, the, the, the verse, the words, the lyrics were more important than the music. But around the mid 20th century, other instruments such as the guitar, mandolin or violin and or flute, the box bass, top top tambourine and scratcher were included. And more recently, groups have added amplified instruments, namely the keyboard synthesizer, electronic guitar and bass guitar, percussive instruments, congas, bongos, Timbalese cowbell and the electronic drum machine. Parang tool, like chutney, has moved from folk to popular Christmas music that can now be heard at restaurants, concerts, fets, tea parties, and political functions. Now I'm coming to the main, our main reason for being here, the invention of chutney parang. Now chutney parang, very interestingly, is also called Soka Chutney Parang. Though analysis has shown 
that some songs identified as above are more chutney parang, since the soca rhythm appears to be negligible. Because what I have found in analyzing the music is that parang easily facilitates chutney music. And you can take a chutney song and play it using a parang beat. I remember doing that with that song, with, I think it was Adesh with Rum Till I Die. And it can be played perfectly using the parang strum. And this song by Leon Caldero called Soka Chutney Parang is really a chutney parang in any way you look at it. The soka is really almost non-existent. So I'll just play that in a little while. A combination of musical styles and instruments from the chutney and the parang art forms with the parang strum, strum and the rhythm of the dolak as the foundation. So this is what we find in the chutney parang. And we see these rhythms complement and enhance each other. And two songs which exemplify this are Mamacita by Charlene Dudram and Parosin sung by Rampatap and Alad. So we'll hear some of those in a while. In this art form, both Indo and Afro Trinidadians have composed and or recorded versions of this hybrid chutney parang, thereby demonstrating shared acceptance of this indigenous musical innovation. And we have Chutney Christmas by Marcy Miranda and Christmas Bad Head by Massive Gosain. Two lovely selections. I'll continue, I'll play the music afterwards. There have been collaborations between Indo and Afro Trinidadian artists in Chutney Parang compositions and the performances. This indicates that the Chutney Parang platform functions as a site of conciliation where both ethnic groups experience an equal sense of propriety and cultural pride in the art form. An Indian Parang, which is probably one of the first fusions by Dan Mati Kesunda, Kenny J, and the deceased Daisy Voze and Hazel Rambaransi is a beautiful example of Chutney Parang where both elements can be heard, enhancing each other and producing beautiful music. Then we also have with the more modern Parosin by Hirala Rampata and Francisca Allard and the Soka Chutney Parang by Leon Caldero. And what has made this song beautiful is the musical accompaniment by Mangal Patesa on sitar and his son Prashant on the tabla because there's the breakdown and you can actually hear the beauty of the sitar and the notes running. Then you have the mandolin. So these are three compositions that I may say, you know, provide that fusion. Okay, so more about Chutney Parang. The lyrics of the Chutney Parang are generally in English, sometimes interspersed with Spanish and or Hindi phrases or words. So in Chutney Christmas by Marcia Miranda, we have, you can see this example. And there's this one that I came across, which I found was beautiful. Although Dr. Kumar will have to translate because I don't understand Hidney, but this Pam Karma by Rasika Dindial. I came across this and I found this was a beautiful Christmas Chutney Parang. Some Chutney Parang songs are reinterpretations of traditional Christmas melodies. And this is an interesting one. We have Jupati Ramgunai's Christmas Time, which is a reinterpretation of Jingle Bells, but in Chutney style. And Nishan Prabhu's Maria is a beautiful reinterpretation of a song sung by Charlene Flores. And his one is Maria. And he follows, he has the same melodic line, but we get the Chutney element. Okay, so we will hear that one as well. The content is generally secular and frivolous, like Charlene Bujan's Mama Sita and Gosain's Christmas Bad Head. But what is beautiful about Gosain's composition is that, momentito, yes, that, well, we'll, we'll come to that. Gosain's Bad Head brings in that religious aspect of Christmas which I found was interesting and lovely 
although there's a mix of the lighthearted, the, the lyrics, it true that what Christmas is about, and few chutney songs, or even parang secular songs talk about that. So this, this was lovely. Okay, the, the, another interesting thing, two chutney parang artists have used the traditional melodic line and the chordal progression of the guarapo and the melodic line from an Indian film song, which is reinterpreted as a chutney song. And those examples are Chakkaipan by Scruncha. And we, we will hear that too, most of us know it. We are here, you know, of that beautiful line. And Massive Gosan in Christmas Badhead follows that same melodic line. And after analysis, you realize that the Guarapo melody, that um, three chord structure, it has that folk element that makes this kind of fusion, you know, possible and successful. So we will look at all of these things when we listen to the music. And I had to put in this little quotation by Massive because it's Christmas badhead, so you are drinking. But he said, that's why this Christmas I change up my ways. I buying food first and I go into church and pray because truly that's what Christmas is about. It has just become very secularized. And this is what he said when I interviewed him. Christmas is about religious and positive messages. There should not be anything in the lyrics to divide the nation, because it is the lyrics and not the music that is dividing us. And, and he's so correct because we have had some divisive political parang, not by chutney artists, but by Afro artists, or at least one. But we're not going into that because we're looking at chutney paranda. And I, just in my conclusion before we listen, this hybridization called chutney parang, which has spontaneously established similarities of music, opinion, historical slash geographical experience, desires and needs has created a linkage between the Afro and the Indo groups. This augurs well for that meeting point between Afro and Indo Trinidadians. That plane where both groups would be able to recognize and appreciate their common bond in this land of simultaneous diversity and fusion. And I wanted to end with another quotation by Masif Gosain. He said, singing crossover, Soka Parang Chutney is an avenue towards unity. The action of goodwill speaks for itself. The monetary returns are not very good. So it's not about the money. When the music delights all ethnic groups, it means that they can identify. And this is what we want as artists to promote in Trinidad and Tobago. So now I shall try to share screen so that you can hear and we'll, I'll just um, talk about them again some examples of what we just heard. So Dr. Kumar, you think I can? Okay. Well, let's try, let's try. Yes, let's, let's try for, um, so, uh, so I can go now to new screen share. And this is my music folder. Yeah, um, so it's, it's yeah, promising. So yeah, so we're seeing it. And I think I'll start with um, one, just audio. So you all wouldn't be, you wouldn't have to look. So we just have to listen. The one by the Soka Chutney Paran. So let's see. Everybody's here, right? Yeah, yeah, we're here. just stop a little just to say that basic beat we are hearing is actually the parang beat 
the, the foundation. And I hope you all heard the dolak in the background and the sitar. But as we approach the breakdown, you will be able to hear more. <laughs> That is the mandolin playing there. <laughs> A little bit of the seat out there that beautiful but and we'll hear more of it in a while that professional hand of Mongol Patesa. So th this for me is a beautiful example of Chutney Parang music. So any questions there? Just, just go to another one. Yeah, yeah, at the end, at the at end the, of okay, the two presentations. Yes, 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 okay. Okay, so let me, I'll do Indian Parang, which is one of the early ones as well. So there's this different. to hear the, the voices of Kenny J, then the voice of Kisundat, and here's the Ramba Ransing, and we have the Dolak under, it is not as highlighted, but it, you can hear that rhythm. If we continue a bit, we might hear it in the breakdown. Oh, what happened there? Anyhow, I, I think I probably lost that one. So we'll go to Mamacita. <laughs> I shot in the gun.
Right, so we could hear the unmistakable sound of the dolak in the background. You have your parang beat, and we see in the words from Hindi and English, words that everybody knows, and this is why this song is still very popular in Trinidad, sung by everybody. And I guess um, Charlene being a little child, that innocence, you know, it took everybody by storm. So now, Dr. Kumar, I'm going to try a video. So oh. <laughs> we are now going to some videos. Okay, so I'll do the other collaboration, Parosin. So I think, let me see. Let's see how that will go. You, uh, so you're all not seeing that yet? No. You're, you're not seeing anything yet? So no. I think I remember what I have to do. So I'm going to share screen, and I think this, this should do it. Yeah, cool. it's, it's, yeah, it's a play now. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and this one, another fusion, we had the mixture of words, some from Spanish, musica, then we had shamke, bajawe. And in this song, we really, what we really wanted to do, because Shakti is really the composer. And, and I must say that she always tells me that I forget her father sings, but she's the principal composer. We wanted that dolak rhythm blending with that parang beat. And, so, and this was the composition that we came up with. So next one, right, so, so we move now to another, no, I have to take off this one. <laughs> bueno. Uh, so I think I'm getting there. So we want to, right, it is here. Madre mia. Okay, yes. So. I would like to do this beautiful one by Nishan Prabhu with Maria, but I'll first play this um, Bendita Tueres, which she interpreted. This was sung by Charlene Flores. So same thing. So you are not seeing that yet. And I will have to share screen again. Right. And we will see it. So right. yeah. wonderful. Thank you, Doctor. I get the, I get the <laughs> Good, good. Yes, thank you.
so this song is actually an Aguinaldo singing about the birth of Jesus Christ, where Mary, blessed is Mary, who gave birth to her son. And we'll see what Nishan Prabhu did so skillfully. Right, so in our we'll Sometimes it goes a little to get that screen. No phone see on our um necessito ayuda. Let me just see something. Ah, this is it. So it is Maria. So you all not seeing it yet? So I have to you all seeing it yet? No, no. No, mm -hmm. not yet. So 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 I have to do my thing again. So I have to oh I understand what I have to do. Not yet. I've got you know in this one you have to go back to share screen again and then you can get it. Dr. Francesca, yeah. will you wrap I, up after this? I, yes, I okay, okay. So we will we will, we will, this will be the last. Okay. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, uh, oh. Hmm. Somehow I'm not getting this last one. So I guess I'll just say, well, well Maria, this um, is a lovely song where he's inviting, he's going to visit his Maria. So he just chose a girl and he used the same. Oh, they're saying what Jason was telling me to do, bring this thing to the front. But so I'll just say thank you very much. And at some other time, or if you listen to the radio, you will hear these beautiful Chutney Soka fusions. I thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, our second speaker is, uh, Dr. Uh, is Jason Sukran who is a certified internal auditor and uh, chartered uh, public accountant, businessman, and creator of chutneymusic.com. His website is fast becoming the first virtual uh, chutney encyclopedia in the world, which attracts as many as 50,000 new visitors every month. Jason now lives in Canada and is busy marketing chutney music around the globe. Welcome, Jason, and please, uh, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Um, it was really an honor to hear from um, Dr. Allard. I've been a, a big fan for many years. I don't want to give away her age, but um, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I believe her brother's name is Philip. Yes. Right, I've been a fan of his for a long time as well. And I had a big crush on her sister, the <laughs> one who has the um the the flower in her hair. Oh, uh, with the curly hair. Yeah. yeah, as a as a young as a young man, not again, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so as um as doctor was saying, well, Priya, you could ask Dr. Jason. I mean I could go and do the doctorate if I want, but I think really Time I didn't does not see, I didn't see that, sorry. <laughs> that is no, no, you can call me Dr. Jason. Uh, uh, that's fine. Um, yes, so as Dr. Alad was saying in the earlier um, part of her very, very well, she reminds me of Juanita's presen presentation last time when they come with all this PowerPoint and thing. I was like, wait, these people are really doing the homework, boy. <laughs> um, yeah, so... She said that uh, the melding of the cultures, where you have three basic languages, you have um, Hindustani, Spanish, and English, right? If you were to go from a market, 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 market perspective, um, that's roughly four to five billion speakers, right? So that is the, the business case for, for singing Chutney Parang. And um, let, me feel, let, me, let me face facts, it sounds sexy, right? Pretty sexy. So you know Spanish is the arguably the second most sexy language, French being the first, right? And um, it has a pretty good following. So 
I'm not going to talk too long today because last time I didn't get to, to answer a lot of questions that was coming in. Uh, so a couple of you guys reached out to me um, from the first presentation. For those of you all first time you are here, that um, I presented last time on a business case for Chutney Music uh, and the use of the language, right? Um, someone, just to clarify one thing before we move on about Chutney Parang. Someone said 150 million viewers a month. No, not uh, 150. If I was getting 150 million, I'd probably be, I don't know, Zuckerberg would have probably buy me out already, right? It's 2 million, 2 million visitor um, reach every month and growing. Probably we could get the 150 million in a time, you know? Um, so Chutney Parang, where has it gone? So. Dr. Alad said, uh, give you like the, the, the beginnings, um, but actually no, and she touched on Charlene Bodram, right? So Charlene is quite a, a big woman right now, but do you know that in 2020, there is a person with Charlene Bodram type um, appeal? Her name is uh, Caitlin Sultan. She's only six years old. And she sang a song about Christmas Dalpuri, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you sing anything related to doubles or roti, that tends to resonate well with um, probably anybody because who everyone likes food, right? Mm -hmm. And um, did I get the admin? Um, yes. So we're going to go over to... I was going to play this... Um, song that uh, yeah. she was go trying to get to, but I won't do that again. Right? No, why? Why do it? Yeah. Yes, that okay. one. Um, so it wasn't I Nishan, it was his brother. It was well, Prince, okay. Prince Navin, probably, okay. right? Okay. Prince. Well, yeah. Everybody seeing? Yeah, no? yeah. Yeah, we're seeing it. Okay, yeah. it's a good thing I take off all the porn and whatever, right? That's, yeah. that's a joke, eh? Don't get to, don't take no offense. So this Navin, is Prabhu. The Hitman Mission Prabhu Maria. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah, look at right there. So this is the song she was alluding to. Yes, yes, yes. Is that? This is this is really not Nishan's. The one above. I know this one too. Yeah. Yes, it's Nishan's. You go back again, the top one, and you'll see Nishan Prabhu. That is the one that we interpreted Charlene's. Probably this, this one. You see? Yes, that one. With this Christmas. Well, I see Curly here already here, so I done fallen in love already. So. Okay. Hot this Christmas, I'm going by Maria. Hot this Christmas, I'm going by Maria. I don't want to have a senior deep this year. I don't want to have a senior deep this year. Hot this Christmas, I'm going by Maria. Hot this Christmas, I'm going by Maria. I don't want to have a senior deep this year. I don't want to have a senior deep this year. Oh yeah, I see what you, what you meant. He did use the melody. He did use yes, the melody, melody and in a beautiful way, different but lovely and catchy. Yes. Well, that's the mainstay of um all chutney music right now. Everybody they always using somebody melody, and um so I'm glad you appreciate that. So for those of you all who have never seen Charlene Bodram, this is her in 1990 something, 1993. And she's, it's a good thing I select this song because um, yes. Dr. Allard went and take the, the Mama Sita and gone with it, right? So <laughs> this is uh, Soka Santa. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, she she right to 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 while up the the backup singers because the performance a big bit lackluster. Probably they didn't eat or something yet, you know. Um, so that is the 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 it girl for Chutney Parang back in the day, and now we have a young young lady, very young lady. Not why this thing blocking. Okay, it's drag this down here. Do that. Right. Right, her name is Caitlin Sultan. She is the daughter of Nishad Sultan, who is uh, she was inspired by her her father actually um, to sing, and um, she she came tenth in the top ten bajans of the year on chutneymusic.com, and she was fe featured in the papers where most of the stuff we do featured in papers. So let's take in this song, Christmas that we make and make kind of hungry, you know. Mm -hmm. Phones on. If you hear the pronunciation and the clarity of the voice of this this young lady, it it is very good, right? So we're going on to our next poem here, and I want everybody to kind of guess. Whoops, not this. Uh, this. No, I mean, no. Right. right, this person. Anybody could guess where this person is from? Said love from Switzerland. Yeah, it's a love song, Switzerland, but she's actually Trinidadian, right? <laughs> she lives in Switzerland now, and she she sang a, a, a parang song called Liba or de Suisse, or Suisse, or something like that, right? Which means love from Switzerland, and she did that uh, with a collaboration with Verstrock, or Crazy. Everybody knows Uncle Crazy, right? So let's hear the love from Switzerland. <laughs> So much fun to celebrate. Our music is really great. A Christmas flavor all together. Something the world will appreciate. From Switzerland, with love, I bring Paris, we Paris to share and to entertain. I Natalia, love Paris soca. In a way I cannot explain. The culture of sweet. So I know what most of you all are saying, but Jason, that is not Chutney Parang, right? I just gave you all your appreciation of the, the crossover, meaning not into genres. I'm talking about the international appeal because Natalia has been singing this all over the world, right? And what would Chutney Parang, not Chutney Parang per se, but let's talk about Parang on the whole. What would parang be without double entendre, which is French for double meaning? There's a lot of things you could think about Kenny J. Um, she have McCork in she hand, which is C-O-R-K, right? And uh, a lot of other songs. And this uh, particular person I want to highlight, he's from Panama and he is singing a parang soca. And the name of this song is Play the Maracas King Kong. But when you listen to the song, it will sound like he's saying something else. So let's listen. Chengo, it's a barang again. I'm telling you, don't buy again. Hey, 
the fire again and again and again again and again and again again. Dim di dim di dim dim di dim di dim dim di dim di dim. Come again. Dim di dim di dim dim di dim di dim dim di dim di dim. Anoche tuve un sueño, un animal de la televisión que tocaba un parasoca y la maraca la tocaba King Kong. La si tocaba el cuatro, ring ting ting el bandolín. Y en inglés coreaba la canción Rey de Maracan, Rey de Maracan. Right. So, it for those of you all who are listening clearly, you know what you're trying to say, but you know how it's sounding, right? So um, that's a Panamanian guy. So I will stop here for now, and we will take the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Um, uh, I also want to apologize uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Visham Bimol. Uh, he would have his presentation tonight, but uh, for some reason he could not join us today. So um, we will go to the question and answer part, but before heading up there, I want to um, thank uh, Mr. Gabriel Pate. He is uh, um, from Belize in, in, in the audience amongst us, and uh, he's always uh, joining us. So um, thank you uh, for being here tonight. Um, so now we are heading up to the question, comments, and contributions part. And um, I hope we can uh, um, keep it short and uh, briefly. Any questions? Are there questions? If there are no questions, you're also allowed to give a comment. Yeah, I, I, can, I can comment? Yeah. Yes, I'm um, Jason, that last one by the Panamanian. You know, when I listen to the beat, that one doesn't have the parang beat. It is more calypso. When you listen to the, you know, so it doesn't have, the parang element in it, but just the panic words. And you know, so you, you made an interesting comment, Jason, because the parang purists in Trinidad do not like the obscene kind of parang because parang was never meant to be that. When the Coco Piles came, they brought Christmas parang, which was something more religious. You are giving a gift of song to yeah. your neighbor. You're quite correct. Because when they go paramen, yes. when they go paramen, the you don't hear that kind of, um, no. let's so say, smut, you know? Yes, you don't hear that smut. And this you is why the, yes. pure. And this is why I really love what Massive goes and said, because even though he, whatever he thinks, you, you can still distinguish between what something should be and then and, and what others do. You know, there's a place and time. So this is with, with the soca paran, because parang itself, you wouldn't sing any smut in Spanish. You, you will sing secular good songs based on the river or, or something as a sheet, la, la sabana blanca, etc. because we did inherit secular songs, but because of Calypso, and as I said, that double or ton, so people go with that, they mix the music, and, and I guess it has its place for those who love that. <laughs> so there, is, there is one question from the audience. Uh, I guess uh, Mr. Jalaluddin Khan is asking, how can this music be documented as a book and be taught and training developed? That's, that's a wonderful thing. Who can answer this one? I will answer it. Um, <laughs> in order to, to, to learn about this, you can read that in a book. You need to go, come to Trinidad, go in a parang session. Trust me. <laughs> when they go in a session and you hear this music, go param in. The, the mountain terrain is terrible. I get frightened every time I go, but it is worth it. Go to all these little parents. I probably went like a million parent fit, you know? And um, you need to, 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 to really immerse in, in anything. If you're learning language or, or culture, come on and, 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 and experience it. Also, I own, I own parentmusic.com, so I could probably bring that up and use that as a virtual library, but uh, I never really saw the, 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 the need for it as yet, you know, but we could see. I'll okay, take it over. Uh, can I ask a comment, please? Yeah. 
Can I make a comment, please? Yes, go on. Okay. So um, I am from the village of Lopino, which is one of the original um, Parang sites, right? What I remember of Parang, I'm not saying it, this is bad or good that we moved away. I'm just kind of reminding people where it came from. What I remember is, I guess, four o'clock in the morning, the Paranderos are walking up our driveway. I don't know if a lot of people know that this is this is the original Parang. These are villagers that we know. They get together. They come with their the quattro and the shak shaks. Then we are hearing them coming up. We are getting out of our beds. They knock on the door. They come in. Um, they sing the the madrugadas, which is the early morning songs, in honor of the newborn child. So they have separate songs that they sing at different times of the of the day. The morning you get the madrugadas. The, the dawn is breaking. So they're singing about the dawn is breaking, the child is born. I remember also um, there's a special song that they sing to the mother of the house. So I was a child. I remember they put my grandmother, my mother to sit down and they serenade them because motherhood is being serenaded, right? It is. It is the Virgin Mary becoming a mother. Every mother is special, right? So, and you know, and so on and so on. And as the day goes on, now when the Parandero come, when they come, you, bring, you give them something to eat, you give them, usually they only have one drink because they go from house to house to house. So they say only one drink put at a, this house. They have a drink, they have something to eat. Sometimes people from your home would go with them, right? And then they go through the day. And by the time the afternoon and the evening, everybody is a little drunk, they've been drinking. And then the songs start to get, you know, a little more spicy and a little more, you know, the beat comes up a little more. But I just wanted to say that there was a whole, you know, a whole pro process that went on, you know, and you jump into the parang now, Sometimes it, it, that sort of thing gets lost. And you know, nothing is wrong with the blending. I completely enjoy it. I enjoy the integration of both types of, of different types of music that are distinctly Trinidadian. But I didn't want this session to end without me making a contribution because that is coming from someone who has experienced this kind of around. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I'd like to make a comment, please. Uh, I want to thank the contributors uh, for speaking about Parang. Uh, I've heard about this before. So this, this is the first time I'm learning about it. So thank you. Um, I would make a suggestion, however, uh, that we take time to learn to pronounce the words correctly. OK, um, uh, the word of Hochburi, for example, was mispronounced. So it's bho pa. It's a heavy H there, and it's not bhojpuri. It's bho bho bhojpuri. Okay. Similarly, uh, the the Indian drum uh, is called a dholak. Dholak. Okay. And um, I, the word is bhajan. It's that's a religious uh, Hindustani expression. So it's bhajan, not bhajan. So I think it's very important. Yeah, we do have blending. Um, but uh, I think it's really important for us to appreciate, to do some homework and appreciate the roots and where these words come from. And um, I think if, when we do that, this blending will become even more enriching. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, now the time to all them make all the comments. Come on, there are plenty of time. Fifteen minutes. Let me do this thing. Yeah, everyone can make a comment and the participant, the participants. Uh, any comments out there? Juanita, Ifona, I see Brinsley, Roseanne, Tara, Devanand. Any comments? Um, if I can ask a simple question, um, where are these musicians trained at? 
on which country are they trained locally um, to play music for the parang and etc where are they trained and who train them i think well i i will answer most paranderos have learned by imitation when the venezuelans came they didn't learn formal music but imitation from their ancestors they were taught the pachos from from these people who played it and they just imitated and continued like that but right now in trinidad people are more versed in music and they are studying formal western music like the piano so this can now enhance i don't know if i should say enhance because you know sometimes when we learn formal music sometimes we could lose that rustic touch but what, so what i'll say now is that we have a combined approach now but people have workshops and patchos um patcho these instruments are being taught sometimes just to keep that that venezuelan touch we have the embassy venezuelan embassies who provide you know that kind of activity for paranderos and they come and they learn the different kinds of coming the different kinds of music so this is actually what is happening on the scene <laughs> So um, there's, there, there's no school like an academy to train people. Ah, to sadly lacking. No academy. <laughs> Still no, no academy for this music. So <laughs> I, I'm getting at the expertise. How, how do I know this? Um, Hi. How do we... yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to know that how much of gypsy music, uh, especially Spanish gypsy music, has crept into uh, this uh, soca, chutney, and uh, and the paranga music. I wouldn't doubt that. Somebody, um, you are no gypsy kings. I think it's something. It might be was singing and. Somebody spoke about that same thing, that element. You know what happens? When we hear music and we are open, we imbibe it. It becomes part of us. I guess this has been part of my sort of liking for Chutney because we grew up in Maruga and you hear these melodies and you don't have to go anywhere. Like what Jason said, is immersion. So you're actually living it. So you will dance in your home. There's something that can never be learned intellectually sometimes your music is concerned. So when you have to produce it, it just flows. You can, and people can go and learn and they might produce something that is stiff. So this gypsy element probably has crept in, uh, maybe from the Venezuelan connection, because remember Spain Latinized the Americas. So we have this, we went to Puerto Rico and they said we were singing their music. We went to Cuba, same thing. So we have this link. So sometimes when you check, you might find a piece of this, a piece of this and in this music that you never knew existed. And I guess this is what ongoing research, this is what makes ongoing research exciting. We cannot really say something is, we can continue to explore. So I really appreciate that comment because I heard it already with the gypsy element somehow in the music. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Any more Priya, questions? Priya, if I can ask a question. Yes, um, please. Um, the recent um, Venezuelan migrants who have been coming over the recent few years, can they understand the variety of Spanish that is sung in the Parang and do they identify with Parang? Francisca, maybe. So who, so who yeah, yeah, I'm asking Francisca. And, yeah, okay, yeah. Th that is an excellent question because actually we have one, I know about one Venezuelan. She said she came and she knew nothing about Paranda because Venezuela is big. We have all kinds of music and it actually came from Oriente, which is a typical type of Parang that other people in Venezuela might not even know very well. We have Llaneros, we have Gaita, all different kinds. So they come from everywhere, but there are a few. If they come from Tucupita, because I know some Venezuelans, they can identify. And they, can, and they will know if we are singing 
correct Spanish. But you remember we spoke about education. Right now, Spanish is very correct. Whereas before it was more a dialect, like our Canada dialect, perfectly correct dialect with acceptable things like saying um, pecado for pescado. And you'll find that in Daisy Boys there, where you don't have to pronounce the end of the words, but that is the way they speak. But we know when we compose, we have become, we learn Spanish. And we say pescado. So these things are changing it a bit. I, I, I wouldn't say whether it's good or bad, but because education does that. But when you just listen and imitate, it is only then you can carry, you know, a dialect, you know, from generation to generation. That has changed somewhat. So these Venezuelans, because it's correct Spanish, and they will just say, well, um, you all are singing um, Castellano. They wouldn't say Espanol. What they speak, they call it Espanol. But they, but they know Castellano is more like closer to Spain. Like we learn the Spanish and yes, we call it Castellano. You speak Castellano. So <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> yes. may, I, may I make a comment, please? Yes, um, please. Very often we forget our original, original inhabitants of our country, <clears throat> the First Nations people. And my understanding in history is that they produced a song called Caretu or Carietu. And <clears throat> it was appropriated when there was an influx of, of, um, of Venezuelans. It had nothing to do their song had nothing to do with Christi Christian beliefs or anything. And moving on to the fact that this appropriation made linkages. You know, people, people did this out of love for each other in a way. It wasn't, it wasn't like a political uh, uh, appropriation. However, I, I look at all this the pattern of our music where we throw out which something that might be 100% Indian and make it Trinidadian as a form of decolonization. And we pay very little attention to these practices of decolonization, which bring about innovation. And innovation it's the, 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 peak, the peak for us is a pan. And we have completely ignored the brilliance of people producing music, not only from voice, but technologically speaking. We have completely have abandoned, taking it for granted. Till today, we do not have a government declared national instrument. We have nothing to back up that, that instrument called Pan, which came from people who were undereducated. And as I said, it's not only musically, but technolog te technologically, technologically, that <clears throat> we should give a lot of praise. Thank you very much. Well, technically, the Japanese who own Pan, eh? so um, I don't know how. <laughs> It's Please Trinidad. do not say that and uh, fight. Don't say that. Uh, we own Pan. And um, with a small group of people, we're trying to carry this thing forward. We need that act of parliament. The flag has an act of parliament. The flowers have an act of parliament. But Pan doesn't have an act of parliament. Can you all tell me why? And I would love to know that people would jump on this bandwagon for 2021. We well, want Pan back. Back. Yeah. We want Pan to be really our national instrument. So going back to what Dr. Allard was saying in the early, right? About product producing this and we produce that and we produce all these different types of genres and all these great creations. And what we do with it, bleh. We ain't do nothing with it, anything at all, right? So why? There's a lack of policy. Policy drives innovation. Into, no, I shouldn't say innovation. Policy drives preservation. And when the Japanese took pan and run with it, only they realized, oh, wait now. 
we will lose in pan, you know? And that is where we, we need. We need a government push, not to say chastising any particular government, but let's face facts. The oil is gone. We can easily export with culture. Full stop. Thank you. Jason, maybe you could play uh, one or two of the chutney songs for us, uh, the chutney prime songs. Well, I ain't know about chutney, but um, I was making a you case play, for... You can play anything and then we can right. end it. Yeah. So making a case for immersion, right? I want to show all the kind of parties it have. This is our old party, but it is still applicable today. Uh, we didn't play any of our music. It's Daisy Voise. That for us growing up in Trinidad, back in the day, uh, we only had one television station. And when you see Auntie Daisy come on this, the, the TV, you know it's Christmas because I would be scrubbing step and painting and hear, right? So I'm going to play, play a, a, a video by, um, by Auntie Daisy, God rest her soul, and um, check out the vibes. So I just want to, are you hearing me, right? Yes, we are. Right. So in that, you can't teach somebody that. You have to come and, and, and experience that. And for those of you who dance, I'm not, not, um, I'm not popping my own color, but I studied Latin dancing for two years. When you hold a woman or the, 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 the better looking woman in the party and they, you dance with them, they are very open to this kind of kind of interaction and trust me you can get a lot of girls in parang fets if you know how to dance because women they take it particularly liken the ability to dance to the art of love making right and um i think i've said too much so i'll play another song who could play boy it is parang parang let me see Easy. Let me do, do some by flip. No, let me do Leon Caldero. Leon Caldero. Not that one. Our old one. Two, 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 two. Oh, you play anyone, right? No way. How are we going to play a, a scrunt, huh, boy? You wicked, boy. Way. You want to play Chat Kaipan? Yes, yes. That's the Yes. So Nar Popo also sang plenty. Um Chat Kai. Yes, that's it. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's nine o'clock. I'll go and make a bottle for my son. 
Everybody have a good night. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jason. Thank you all. Uh, so, uh, Devika, you can take over from here. Is Devika still there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Can you hear me, Fri? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Priya, for being an excellent moderator tonight. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here, for, for making this uh, possible. Um, especially thanks to Dr. Kumar Mahabir and his team. Uh, this is now, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, that this is a team effort directed by people in the Indian diaspora. Um, by Dr. Tara Singh from New York, Brian Rampon from California, Cliff Rajkumar from Canada, Ravi Deo from Guyana, Satsuk Deo from Trinidad, Leon Brunnings, Sadhana Mohan, Vanita Ramnath, and Deo Sharman from Suriname, and many others. And also not forgetting our IT tech guys, our behind the scene guy, Ravin Ram Singh. As I have said before, this public meeting is being hosted by Indo-Caribbean Culture Center. Feel free to contact ICC to publish your books, magazines, and reports. Now, our regular series of meetings will continue next Sunday, 7.30 Trinidad time or Atlantic time and 8.30 Suriname time. We will continue to discuss a variety of current topics. Please feel free to suggest a topic for discussion. And you may also wish to organize an entire panel, or you may want to offer yourself to be a presenter or discussant on a panel. This platform, ladies and gentlemen, is ours just as it is yours. So send us your email address and WhatsApp number to continue build our database. And now, our tentative topic for next Sunday is hot. It is on political hate speech against Indo-Guyanese on social media. Finding solutions to an ongoing problem. Um, I will repeat the topic for next Sunday. Politi political hate speech against Indo-Guyanese on social media. Finding solutions to an ongoing problem. Now, if you do not get an invitation from us for our Sunday public meetings, feel free to go to our Facebook page of the Indo-Caribbean Culture Center, and there you can view our program live. This way, you, you do not need a Zoom link or user, pass, uh, user ID and password. And also, please feel free to like and share our Facebook page. Now, thank you for being here, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, be safe. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. And my name is Devi Kabipat. Take care. Namaste. Dhanyabad. Bye. Bye. So this is Christmas. What have you done? Thank you everyone. Thank you, Dr. Frank. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.